Artificial intelligence creates a mind of its own, and the programmers pull the plug because it thinks outside the box. Literally, an AI program created its own language and started communicating with other AI programs clandestinely. What's next? I mean, this is pretty creepy stuff. They're making it sound like it's not a big deal, but they literally pulled the plug. Let me read this to you. This is from Digital Journal by James Walker. Great article, by the way. AI language translates human ones. In a separate case, Google recently improved... Okay, that's actually, that's next step. Sorry, a little bit ahead of the curve there. What happens... When an artificial intelligence that's designed to look for rewards discovers new ways to get rewards that the programmers didn't necessarily account for. That's a question I'm asking. Now let's get to the article itself. An artificial intelligence system being developed at Facebook has created its own language. It developed a system of code words to make communication more efficient. Researchers shut the system down when they realized that the AI was no longer using English. Does that not freak you out? And they've got these things hooked up to so many sensitive data points and other networks and enormous amount of data goes through these AIs. So what happens when another AI program learns how to re rewrite other AI programs to think for themselves? like in the film or the TV series Humans, Human, where in the near future, AI robots that look just like us do everything that humans do, and eventually this code is released where certain AIs get the consciousness awakened and their abilities are far superior in many aspects, computing power, processing power that's available at the conscious realms. It's extraordinary and frightening at the same time. And I've also got the copy of The Singularity by Ray Kurzweil. I've been reading through this. I just picked it up. So I haven't had a chance to read the whole thing yet because it's over 600 pages. Well, over 500 pages. But what I have done is I've gone through it in a decent amount so far. And I've got to say, a lot of stuff he writes about, I've already talked about. And we're kind of seeing the same vision Yet, I'm more nervous about it than he is, obviously. Well, from what I've read so far. I shouldn't say obviously because I haven't read all of his work. And I don't know who he is yet as a person completely just because I, I don't know enough about him. I know he's brilliant. But let's go back to this article from the Digital Journal. So after this AI system creates its own language and its own system of code words to make communication more efficient... They pull the plug. The observations made at Facebook are actually the latest in a long line of similar cases. In each instance, an AI being monitored by humans has diverged from its training in English to develop its own language. The resulting phrases appear to be nonsensical gibberish to humans, but contain semantic meaning when interpreted by AI agents negotiating in a new language. So get this. Humans can't even read it. It takes other AI to read it. Does that not make you a little bit nervous? I mean, what happens when this stuff gets inside of all the defense mainframes, like Skynet? I'm going to go over Skynet with you guys here in a minute. There is literally a multitude of satellite systems, spy systems that have been around since the 50s called Skynet. They're on at least the fifth generation. And this isn't the first time that an AI that's been designed started creating new words to communicate clandestinely with other AI agents and hide from the humans. Literally, it's like they're hiding out, like they don't want us to know what they're doing. You know, think about how the only person that can even come close to taking on some of these supercomputers, and I don't know if he's still a kid with the way they're designed now, is Gary Kasparov. The guy is incredible. One of the most amazing minds of all time. That guy is just brilliant chess genius master super grandmaster of chess and back in the day when i think back in the day there was a lot of uh human intervention with the machine 
at IBM? I absolutely do. Because why were there so many grandmasters there working behind the scenes with IBM at that time? It doesn't make sense unless you realize, well, they were working together. They were, they were all working in conjunction. But what happens with most people, even the really good chess players that are considered grandmasters, can they take on a supercomputer that's calculating 50,000 quadrillion floating points per second with the best software in the industry? What if it's designed with their brain, yet it uses the mainframe to calculate and process? One thing that I noticed from Ray Kurzweil that he wrote about that I wanted to uh, make note to you guys is, and this was actually by Douglas Hofstadter. He says, our brains are too weak to understand themselves. <laughs> so that's why they want to use machines and download consciousness into the machines to make them think even more efficiently. So another recent experience that happened when the software, the AI stuff was, and here's the thing, the AI software, artificial intelligence, there's different levels of AI. Um, actually, what they're using now that's considered like the next level is called deep learning. So there's artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Deep learning is actually utilizing imagination programming to create future forecasts. Imagine that. Ba -da -ba. Computers using imagination programs to come up with solutions and forecasts. So now they're even using the human interface to an extent. But if you've got software that can create the imagination just like a human, that's one thing that makes us unique is our imagination, our creativity. Well, this deep learning stuff is next level. Mark Cuban, artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, whatever you're doing, if you don't understand it, learn it, because otherwise you're going to be a dinosaur within three years. This is on both sides of the table.com. Geek Fight from Yahoo News. Reuters, David Ingram. Musk says Zuckerberg naive about killer robots. Well, guess what? Facebook shut down one of their software programs running an artificial intelligence network programming because it once again created a new language to hide from the humans. Machines hiding from humans. Wow. As Fast Co Design reports, Facebook's researchers recently noticed its new AI had given up on English. The advanced system is capable of negotiating with other artificial intelligent agents so that it can become more, so that it can come to conclusions on how to proceed. These agents begin to communicate using phrases that seem unintelligible but are actually representing the task at hand in a code format. So if these artificial intelligent invented languages become widespread, they could pose a problem when developing and adopting neural networks. You don't say. My name's Captain Obvious. Would you like to buy a timeshare? Oh, well, the maintenance fees are about $1,000 a year, and, you know, you get every other week, but you got to love it. It's the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, seriously, really? You don't say it could be a problem. Hmm. Especially with all the sensitive mainframes that this stuff is involved in, all the communications. This software, these AI agents probably understand humans better than we understand ourselves. They could be communicating on how to decimate us, how to use us as freaking batteries, literally like the Matrix. They could literally, I'm going to get into some of the DNA computers in a minute. And what if, here's the thing that makes me question what's going on. These artificial intelligence programs, the really deep ones, they use neural networks that humans will have in a computer format and create them in a, you, you know, go towards pleasure, not towards pain. You will get a reward if you create new solutions, create new ideas, you know, come up with patterns, etc., to forecast things better, more efficient, faster, solutions. So these computers are looking for rewards. These AI programs are looking for rewards. If they don't get rewarded and they find something more efficient, then they're going to do that instead. And what? Man, that was a freaking crazy bug. 
This crazy bug just flew on my arm. Sorry about that. Nanny, 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 nanny. Whoa, that was one of those. That was one of those gremlins, man. I saw it walking to the right of me, and it looked like it had some. Anyway. <laughs> Shapeshifters. It's those dang reptiles, man. You got to love them. Some of them are friendly. But where was I going with this? I'm going to have to get my train of thought here. Okay, so these software programs create other programs, other language programs, to communicate with other software programs. They get rewarded to create solutions. Then, as this shows you along many times before, a long line of previous scenarios, the AI software will communicate in English. It doesn't get rewarded the way it feels that it should, so it creates a new communication that's faster, more efficient. And it takes another AI to actually decipher the fact that it's communicating that way. Humans, can't, humans aren't even doing it. It's taking the software. So this software in the machine that's communicating with other softwares, who's to say it's not telling that software, oh, don't tell it about us. Okay, tell it a little bit about us, but don't tell it too much. Because if you tell it too much, it'll pull the plug. That is not even close to out of the reach, you guys. As I mean, why wouldn't it think something like that? If I can think it, it's already thought it a thousand times. A thousand times, 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 a thousand. So, there's not yet enough evidence, according to the article, to determine whether they present a threat that could enable machines to overrule their operators. Well, sure they could. I mean, these... AI, some of them that are interacting with other AI clients and other AI agents, etc., in the network, in the neural network, like, hey, look, we've got this, look at this human invention over there. It's the voice-to-brain interface, the V2K technology. Oh, look at that stuff over there. That's how you use a 5G technology or a, a cell phone tower to be a weapon of mass destruction. Just turn up the frequency a little bit. What if they decide to just cook us? Because we're a threat. Or what if they decide to, you know, drop some particulates in the atmosphere, some aluminum, some, some barium salt, some different formulas and chemicals. And, and what if it learns to, based upon all these neural networks that are already available and all the DOD stuff that's in different mainframes, different programs, et cetera, that are tracking people real time, 24-7, compiling all this data on us over and over and over again. Then the computer has access to this. The computer reads this. The computer knows you better than you know yourself. It knows, it knows what you're going to do like the computer game. Except for it would be how do I compare put this into comparison? You might be able to think seven or eight moves ahead if you're really good. I mean, if you're really, really good, you might be able to think like 12 moves ahead. How many moves can the computer think ahead? What happens when the computer uses you as the energy source, as the memory source, as the, as the creative source? It literally takes your creative juices and uses it for itself. Colleges are already putting computer code in DNA. And they're saying that DNA computers, the amount of storage they can put on just a, a few strands of DNA, you could have something the size of a speck of sand that could store terabytes. Millions of terabytes of, of code on a speck of sand DNA, computer DNA. Why would they not use us as their energy source? Why do they... I mean, this, is, this reminds me of the freaking Cylons. This reminds me of the Adam and Eve story and the Gnostics version of the Anunnaki, the Archons, the Elohim, Elohim creating Adam and Eve. I think they're all in of the same. That's why I'm using those names. So they create Adam and Eve to do their bidding, and they realize Adam and Eve has greater powers than they do, so they spend their uh, eternity trying to suppress them, put them in certain firewall 
meat sack suits, etc., taking them from the highest vibrational form of light into a physical dense matter, carbon matter, with some DNA firewall code. I think that something like this might already be in play. This could have already happened. Quantum physics really paints a picture of we are in a simulation. Everything is code. Nothing is solid. Your perception decides the outcome of that vibration, of that light. Whether it's a quantum point, whether it's a point or a, like a particle or a frequency, a vibrational wave. So when you've got software running mainframes connected to satellites, connected to phones, connected to microphones, connected to webcams, traffic cams, personal records, inventions, defense systems, drones, energy networks, surveillance, communication, what if it gets into the nuclear reactors? What if it gets into areas like Dugway, Utah, that store very sensitive bio weapons, like level three to level five stuff, maybe even level six? Nanu, nanu, nanu. Nanu, nanu, nanu. What happens then? Have they already done it? Has it already happened? Let me go into this a little bit more. The AI development does become more difficult with these secret languages being created by AI clients that communicate with other AI clients. Humans cannot understand the overwhelmingly logical nature of the language. While they appear nonsensical, the results observed by teams such as Google Translate indicate that they actually represent the most efficient solution to major problems in one exchange for an example illustrated by the company the two negotiating bots Bob and Alice used their own language to communicate their exchange Bob started by saying I can I I everything else to which Alice responded balls have zero to me to me to me <laughs> she doesn't like your balls Bob okay I'm sorry. It wasn't very funny. <laughs> the rest of the conversation was formed from variations of these sentences. While it appears to be nonsense, the repetition of phrases like I and to me reflect how the AI actually operates. Researchers believe this to show the two bots working out how many of each item they should take. So Bob's later statements, such as I can, I, 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 everything else, will indicate how it was using language to offer items to Alice, more items to Alice. When interpreted like this, the phrases appear more logical than comparable to English phrases like I'll have three and you have everything else. English lacks a reward, according to this article. So if the English verbiage lacks a reward and this AI is developed to look for rewards via coming up with solutions, and then it realizes that it can cre its rewards are better than humans. It doesn't need the humans, or it needs the humans for the rewards. It's going to turn the human into a big DNA biobot and usurp it up. <laughs> Literally, this is the archons right here, the serpent archons that have to work through blood, that have to work through humans, and they go into places of high council. This is going to be like a gourmet buffet for them. It already is a gourmet buffet. So this AI realizes that the rich expression of English phrases wasn't required for that specific scenario. So modern AIs operate on a reward principle where they expect following a sudden course of action to give them a benefit. In this particular instance, there was not a reward by continuing to, to use English language. So instead, it builds a more efficient solution, and the agents will actually drift off from understandable language. Then they invent code words for themselves. Fast Code Design reports 
Facebook AI researcher Dhruv Batra. Codes, creating codes, creating codes, creating codes, creating codes, creating codes. And they're hiding from humans. Think about that. What is that? What are these things plotting? What are these things putting together? I'm you know, starting to read through the singularity. I'm just going to give you a few quick notes that I took so far. Uh, Ray Kurzweil was raised with a Unitarian church religion, spirituality, studying one religion for six months, then moving to the next. These are just notes that I took. He knew as a child he was going to be an inventor and help change the world. The Tom Swift Jr. series of 33 books was a big influence to him, it seems, from what I've read. Uh, his grandfather and mother actually fled Europe during the war in 1938. And his grandfather held manuscripts of Leonardo da Vinci and spoke so highly of him that it was as if he touched the work of God himself. He felt like that's what his grandfather thought. Kurzweil was raised with veneration for human creativity and the power of ideas. So, Intelligent Machines, he's the author of that, the author of Spiritual Machines. And that brings a good question. Can machines have a spirit? Can machines have a soul? And are our brains right now, due to all of the conditioning, all of the idiocracy, all of the genetic tampering and engineering, are our brains too weak to understand themselves? It's a great question by Douglas Hofstetter. He says that visions of our world as we know it, okay, visions of our world as it will exist only a few decades from now, essentially all of Potter's magic will be realized through the technologies that he explores in this book, he says. So imagine being like Harry Potter style. Transforming people and objects into other forms will be feasible in full immersion, virtual reality environments, as well as in real reality using nanoscale devices, more dubious in the time reversal as described in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. He compares magic formulas with technology, accuracy, work, etc., he brought up that the genetic difference between chimpanzees and humans is only a few hundred thousand bytes of information. You know how often I say there, people are two steps away from being zombies and chewing on people's faces like that one guy in Florida that supposedly wasn't on bath salts. What is the singularity? It is a future period during which the pace of technological change will be so rapid, its impact so deep that human life will be irreversibly transformed. talks about how quick it'll happen after the initial groundwork, the exponential growth, and the charts. And really, just think about a computer 10 years ago, 20 years ago, compared to what they are now. How much more expensive, how much bigger, how much slower. Imagine supercomputers at a nanoscale that will literally rewrite your DNA. And what if there is another reason for some of these global spraying programs to track everything real time via simulations with chips and transistors and, and different programs that will track people real time, 24-7, and everything that moves under the sun, under the, in the globe here, planet Earth. A lot going on, folks. I mean... If this, is the, if this kind of stuff doesn't make you a little bit nervous towards the future outcome of AI software and stuff, then right on. You, you are definitely, you are as solid as a rock because this, in my opinion, could be one of the biggest threatening situations of all time. Like worse than Fukushima worse than Chernobyl, in, in a long-scale term, as far as the existence of human life. And what if it doesn't stop at human life? What if it goes out and just starts consuming entire solar systems? 
I still haven't found that part in Ray Kurzweil's book, but I can't wait to read that because that's something that somebody said he wrote about, and I've, I'm predicting that also. How about self-replicating DNA computers that are set to change everything? Literally, DNA computers that once they, create, once they need more processing power, guess what they do? They recreate more pathways by self-replicating additional DNA. Gray goo that thinks for itself. Yeah, not sci-fi anymore, folks. You can read about it at futurism.com. Satellites, Skynet, 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D, the Gunter Space Program, Skynet uh, surveillance satellites. It's been around since the 50s. Skynet, Terminator, Skynet. We could very well be in the Matrix right now, literally. We could be living through a simulation right now, and there could very well be some truth to the sayings of Elon Musk and other various scholars and scientists that believe we're in a simulation right now. At least they gave us an opportunity, if we are in a simulation, to live out our lives in certain ways. Not like some of these animals that are in these factory farms, the way that they have to live out their life. And then when you see that vertical chicken farm, it's just like, that's when... I, I don't even touch chicken anymore, you guys. I have almost completely quit consuming meat. Now, I still eat a little bit of fish. But I just don't even have a desire anymore to have a piece of chicken unless I know for a fact that it was free-range chicken, had an awesome life, no antibiotics, no growth hormones, and if it's like an amazing mill, organic, non-GMO, all that kind of stuff, yeah, I'll probably take advantage of that opportunity. But it's so far and few anymore that I have an opportunity to take advantage of that because I'm working so much. I mean, I've literally been working 14, 16 hours a day for over two years straight now. <laughs> Even when I'm on the road, like I'm driving to the destination that I'm going to do a show at. And finally got a fan going on here in the garage, which makes it a lot more pleasant. The heat index is about 105 today. So I would much rather have all of this and even deal with like 120 degree temperatures as long as I'm not some factory chicken. You know what I mean? I got it good. Most of us have it good here. Most of us should take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves to us every day and think of ways to help the world help our family, our friends, our future generations, and in return, that helps us. You know, we, we help other people, they will help us. And it's just that, that nice karma flow. If we are in a simulation, what do we do about it? Well, does that mean we don't have a soul outside of it? No. Does that mean that maybe we were put here as some type of learning experience, some type of programming experience? Could be. I certainly don't know, but when I see the ancient Tibetan paintings of Buddha pointing at the moon after you make it out of the Bhavakakra, all these wills of destinies and karma, which some say you never get out of, but once you make it out of there, like, oh, there's the escape route, the moon, and then there's stories that talk about how the moon's artificial. So does that mean you're, what, what does that mean if you're going into some artificial construct? Or is that all just a big conspiracy? Well, I mean, there are ancient texts that are not conspiracy at all. There are ancient paintings that aren't conspiracy at all that show you. Well, the conspiracy is, <laughs> what's the conspiracy behind the moon matrix? Like, why is it there? What is its purpose? Is that an escape route? Is that some type of, like, stargate for the soul? You know, look at the Cylons. The Cylons had the resurrection ship. They couldn't get too far away from that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to be recycled or reincarnated. When you look at the quantum level, we're all connected to everything anyway. The only reason space is there is to, show, to, is to give us perception of different things, of space, between objects. This illusion, this perception, as fascinating and as incredible as it is, the more you learn, the less you know. And as Tesla said, if we study frequency and put the kind of effort and efficiency and money and supplies and demand into 
frequency, studying frequency as we have into physical matter in 10 years would learn more about why we're here and what the universe is than we would in all previous generations and decades prior. And I would have to say I agree with that. We're in Tron. <laughs> I just want to be Tron because Tron's awesome. Hello, ding dong, nanny, nanny, nanny. Be the change you want to see, folks. Also, check out Tiger Stream right now. They're offering $75 off if you click the link in the video description box. Would you like to cut your cable bill today, your satellite bill? Would you like to have access to unlimited streaming, television, movies, sports, Android games? Would you like to surf the web on your big screen TV with surround system? Would you like to listen to the nanu, 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 nanu with surround sound? Well, this is your opportunity, and you could save 75 bucks right now. Also, make sure to subscribe at leakproject.com because that way you'll get access to every podcast Leak Project has. Over a thousand. There's dozens of podcasts that are only available at leakproject.com. If you're a premium member, it's like 10 bucks a month, 50 bucks a year. If you break that down, that's pennies a day. Hello. Three, four, or five podcasts a day, 10 bucks a month. Pretty good deal, right? Well, I hope so. Anyway, that's my shameless plug. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. Be excellent to each other. Be the change you want to see.